Hello everyone, this is Hadi. In this tutorial, we're gonna implement a random forest classification in Scala using uh, Spark ML package. Um, we're gonna uh, do a quick overview of uh, the concepts in Spark ML and then start explaining the details of uh, our implementation. Um, some parts are uh, similar to what we did in the last tutorial for uh, logistic regression classification. So I might uh, do those parts uh, faster and sometimes uh, skip them. Uh, remember, SparkML works with data frames as uh, the data types. Uh, and uh, data frames are data structures that hold the data and uh, we have transformers and estimators. Estimators in general are algorithms that uh, first need to be fit on a data frame, then they become transform a transformer, and then uh, transformers are just uh, some algorithms that transform a data frame from uh, to another data frame, normally by adding a column uh, or a few columns to that data frame. And uh, if you uh, put multiple transformers and estimators back to back, you, you will create a, a machine learning workflow and we call that a pipeline. All right, let's start with data. Um, let me first show you what the data is. Uh, it's uh, similar to the other tutorial. Uh, we have uh, manually crafted this data uh, it has columns, ID, income, state, gender, own scar. For example, uh, this row is saying that uh, it's a female, so she has 50,000 income, she lives in California, and she doesn't have a car. Um, so our goal is to use income, state, and gender as features and predict car ownership. Um, so this is pretty small. This is just for the sake of this tutorial. Um, so uh, the way this this time I'm reading the data in a different way uh, compared to the other tutorial, and that is uh, I'm defining a schema structure here first, and then pass that uh, to Spark when reading the data. And the reason for that is uh, if you read it, uh, if you read the data like uh, before you see that you saw that uh, the income would be a string type but now here we are explicitly saying that income is a double type and when spark is reading it it will read it as a double um, so once we do that we get uh, the data uh, read into data df which is a data frame and you cannot uh, as before, you can check a uh, number of rows, the column names, and the schema. Uh, let's see, 13, these are the column names, and the schema. And you see income now is a double, which is good, as we expected. So our uh, response variable is own scar, and we need to predict this, this guy and say whether it's true or false. First of all, we need to Similar to logistic regression, we need to do a string indexing on this and index that column. So once you do that, you can see the results in here. Um, so that's the label indexer we defined. This is now a transformer. We use this transformer. This is just an overview of what we discussed in the last tutorial. I'll one more time for those of you who are um, seeing this for the first time. So you see that owns car index is added and this is like that that the value for that column so one is representing false again one false zero representing true and so on so now let's get to features so the income is a continuous feature state and gender are categorical features so they need to be indexed similar to um, logistic regression but Remember in logistic regression, not only we did uh, uh, string indexing the, uh, um, where was that? Not only we did the string indexer, 
we also did a 100 encoder right after that. So for each of those categorical features, gender and state, um, we did this. But in here, you don't in uh, random forest, you don't need to do any 100 encoding. So you just need to do indexing. So I do this for gender, and I do this. I'm gonna go a bit quick. Y you can uh, follow the details in the past tutorial, so you can see the impact of these uh, indexers. You see state index is added, gender index is added, and these are the values corresponding to those columns. And now we need to add uh, all the columns together. So for doing that, similar to the other tutorial, again, we use vector assembler. So in here I'm saying income, state index, and gender index. Put them all together and create a new column called features. And that column is going to contain a vector of values for those three columns together. So we do this and you can see the result in here. So you see features column is added and that's the vector that I was looking for. for, for 40,000, 0, 0, which is actually these three added together as a vector. Remember in uh, logistic regression we had to uh, do a normalization for um, continuous features but in um, random forest you don't need to do that and even some people say not to do it uh, I mean some people say it's optional but some saying you know, some are saying in some cases you might lose information so they suggest not to do it so we're just gonna skip that and we get just to the classifier itself we need define the uh, random forest classifier so the, the main two um, things that you need to set is label column and features column as I'm defining here. There are other parameters that you can set um, or you can just leave them out to be the default values. In here I'm setting the number of trees. So this is setting uh, in the random forest you have like multiple trees. So you can set the number of trees that you want to have. The default is 20. I'm, I'm setting it to 4. And the depth of each tree, the default is 5, I'm setting it to 3. Even uh, these 4 and 3 are kind of large for this example that we have here. But I'm just using them for the sake of um, this tutorial. Um, so once you define that, uh, notice that we have uh, multiple other parameters that we can set. Um, like max depth, max bin. Um, main information gain and and so on uh, you can see the definition of those if you click on this link uh, or even if you google github three prams scala you might easily find that uh, in here you can uh, let's say I wanna oops let's say I want to find uh, set min info gain what meaningful gain it is let me see like the definition of that guy if I search the parameter value you will see that it mean minimum information gain for a split to be considered at a three mode and it also tells you like what, what, what are the conditions that it should have and what is the default doing that uh, Similar to logistic regression, we need to define the pipeline. And in your pipeline, you have to mention what are the stages. So our stages are gender indexer, state indexer, feature assembler, label indexer, and the random forest. Let's define that. Uh, again, we do a train test split. You see we have seven uh, rows in train data frame and six in test data frame. Let's um, train our pipeline on the train portion. Uh, so again, a reminder, pipeline is a, an estimator, but once we fit it on the data, it becomes a transformer. Now it's fit, we get the model. Um, so we can do predictions using this model. So we use uh, transform to make predictions on the uh, test portion. And uh, for make to make it simple, I am looking just at the uh, these columns in our predictions, and uh, 
taking just the first three rows. So you see here, this is the own scar index. Uh, this is the raw prediction, probability, vector, and prediction. So uh, the, if you remember the logistic regression, in there we also have raw prediction, probability, and prediction. So raw prediction is um, the count of uh, each class um, at the at the node that uh, it falls into that that specific row falls into. So uh, in this example, the count is 0.4 versus 3.6. So th this is um, like this is the um, scaled count. And if you normalize that count to get uh, probabilities, you will get 0.1 versus uh, 0.9. So raw prediction, if you normalize it, you will get the probabilities. I mean, normalize it in a way to get the probabilities. And then prediction is just uh, looking at the highest probability and just pa and just you know, get the uh, get the index for that. Uh, so in this example, this point um, nine is the highest, so its index is one. So this is the prediction one, which is a wrong prediction because the actual prediction and uh, the actual uh, index was zero. Let's see another example. <laughs> These are all wrong in here in this example. So the actual value is zero, but if you look at the predictions, uh, so this is these are the uh, probabilities. So prediction is going to be one. Um, um, let me see if yeah again this one. They're all the same actually. Like, let's let's just change. Maybe it didn't give us good example. Let's. I'm just um, trying to get a better, okay, 10, 3. Maybe this is a better balance. Now we um, train our model, um, make predictions. You know, as you see, all the uh, rows are the same, the predictions and the actual uh, labels are not matching. So this is pretty much uh, expected since we are overfitting and the random force is pretty strong given these uh, parameters that we are using. So uh, this example probably is a good um, case to talk about uh, the uh, random force itself too because Random Forest is a very popular and very powerful model in general, but uh, it has a good uh, chance that you might overfit it if you don't set the parameters right or your data is too small. Like in this example, the data is too small. The data set is pretty small like, compared to actual data sets that we use in uh, uh, our projects. So uh, this is definitely the, the main reason for overfitting, but in general also if you don't set the parameters like number of trees or the depth of the trees correctly, you might uh, overfit the, the, the model, the random forest on data. And that's why uh, once you overfit the, the, the model on the test set might not uh, perform well. And you will see that in the um, accuracy metric that we will have in, in the next few minutes. Um, so, and later in the next tutorial, I'm going to go over the cross-validation parameter tuning, which explains how to do this uh, parameter tuning to find the best parameters for your tree. So remember, we could uh, check the indexes. So you see here, if you look at the label index or labels, you'll see like true is at index zero so and false is at index one. This is the way we can um, see uh, how they are indexed. Um, so similar to logistic regression, since we only have two classes in our example, uh, we could use um, the, the approach in that tutorial to um, um, measure metrics such as AUC, ROC, or other metrics uh, that are used for um, binary classifications. But in this example in here, we are going to go over the multi-class classification uh, metrics, um, um, although we, we only had two classes, but these are the common metrics between multi-class and uh, binary class um, uh, classifications. So um, for doing that, you will just need to define the multi-class classification evaluator. You just set the label column and prediction column. And then you mention the metric name. Um, so the default is F1 score. 
but uh, uh, I'm gonna go with uh, accuracy. You can also have uh, precision or recall. Uh, into, I mean, in, if it's binary, it's just called precision or recall, but in uh, uh, multi-class classification, it's called weighted precision or weighted recall. Um, once you define it, you can see what's the what's the, what's that metric on test predictions. You said zero. <laughs> That's kind of expected. We didn't get good results. All of them were wrong. The one we just saw above. But let's see what's the metric on the trend data itself. It's pretty good. So it's, it looks like sort of it has uh, overfitted uh, on the trend data. Uh, so this is matching our observation a couple minutes ago. After all, it, this is a very small example, so it's not uh, that surprising. So similar to the other tutorial, I put everything together back to back and create a function. Um, so I pulled out all the, the fixed values, just make it cleaner quote. Uh, so you see, I pass all the data and label column, then all the continuous features as an array, similarly categorical features. Everything is similar to the other tutorial except this part that uh, for uh, continue for categorical features I'm, I'm, I'm defining this function to just uh, output a sequence of just string indexer instead of so if you look at the, uh, uh, the other tutorial you'll see here for each uh, categorical feature I had a 2100 two encoder that uh, created a sequence of string indexer and one hot encoder back to back for each categorical feature I had to do this. But in here, I just skipped that uh, one hot encoder. So it's just string indexer. And everything is else is as before, um, feature assembler, random forest, and then I define the pipeline, and then I do the train test split, and so on. And then at the end, I pass the train model. So once I define this, again, similarly, I will uh, use that function. I train a model on all the data that we originally had and see what's, what's the uh, predictions of this train model. Uh, on all data. So here I call this train model trained RF model. Now I do train out of model dot transform on all data. So you see these are the call names. Everything is as expected. And this is the, uh, the first three rows. Um, let's just uh, check the first row. So you see here we have um, raw prediction, probability, and prediction. And before that, it's always car index. So one is the index and uh, raw prediction vector. And these are the probabilities. And this guy, this, this one is the higher probability and its index is one. So the prediction is gonna be one as you can see here. All right. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to um, talk about uh, gradient boosting trees. Um, that's uh, a famous and popular model. Um, it has a lot of similarities with uh, random forest. And it's good to have that with these two back to back. And also, I'm going to uh, go over uh, cross-validation parameter tuning which is essentially very uh, useful when you have multiple parameters to, to find the best parameters for your application. Uh, you'll see uh, one example also could be here. Uh, you remember we had multiple uh, parameters when we were uh, defining our classifier, but we didn't know which one to choose. Uh, maybe a four is not the best, maybe three is a better number, number of threes parameter. So that's how we will find the best one for our application. You will see it in the next tutorial. As always, feedback is welcome and please subscribe if you like it. Thanks.